Hi guys, hello. Today, if my hay fever could hold off long enough, we are going to be looking at the Gigabyte Z97X Gaming 3 motherboard. It's kind of the, the bottom end of the gaming lineup of the Z97 chipset from Gigabyte. So, here it is in the box. They've gone with the uh, black and red colour scheme, the same as ASRock have with their Fatality line, the same as MSI have with their, their gaming line. So, yeah. Hi. On the back of the box they detail lots of the features that we're going to go through a bit later, the back I.O., all the stuff that makes it a decent motherboard in their opinion. Okay, so let's take it out of the box and have a little bit of a look. Okay, so in the box we have a rough two SATA cables, one right angled, one not right angled. Another another two. One right angled, and I don't know why they don't put the two right angled together and the two straight ones together, but there we go. So four SATA cables there. Your back I.O. here. Nice. Uh, black SLI bridge. Yes, black. Nice. Uh, that's the CPU socket cover. I've already taken it out. Uh, we've got standard driver's disc here. Stuff you're never going to look at. A G1 gaming sticker. Wow. Yeah. And of course you've got your multilingual in installation guide. Yeah. And you've got your normal user's manual right here. So let's just put all this stuff aside. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I kinda think I put that in upside down, didn't I before? Anyway. Inside we have the motherboard itself. Okay. So here it is. Okay, so let's just go through a few things on this motherboard quickly. Uh, it's using socket 1150, so that's the Haswell 4th generation and the 5th generation. I think Broadwell will also be on the same socket, I don't know. So yeah, that's right there, isn't that nice? Uh, it supports up to 32GB of DDR3 RAM, that's 8GB each and up to 3200MHz I believe. Uh, overclocked, so yeah, pretty fast on the memory but a lot of these boards are all seem to support exactly the same thing. Uh, one of the added features from the Z97 chipset, which is right under this nice Gigabyte logo here, is it Gigabyte? Oh, it's Gigabyte Gaming, isn't it? It is the M.2 slot right here, so it's like they're like this long, slit in like this. They connect straight to the PCIe bus, so you know they can get up to 10 gigabits per second, which is faster than the SATA, which is right here. You can only get up to six, obviously. Uh, it also has SATA Express, which is pretty similar. You can only use one at the same time. So you either, either use the M.2 slot here, which is like it's the upgrade from M SATA. I should I sorry I should have said that before. Well, M.2 is the upgrade, like the new one of M SATA. So you can only use the M.2 socket or the SATA Express right here. You can't use either of them, as this nice little warning sticker tells you right here. Right, okay, uh, if you. Just, you can see that, oh it's the wrong way around, it has these nice G1 heat sinks here, nice and stylized. Now if you were wondering what the difference between the Gaming 5 and the Gaming 3 is, to be perfectly honest, spec wise, they are absolutely identical. If you go onto Gigabyte's website, and I'll show you a quick screen screenshot here, and look, they have exactly, the Gaming 7 has a few extra features, but the Gaming 5 is absolutely identical. The only difference I see is that the Gaming 5 has slightly beefier heat sinks along here, but they're not stylized, they just have Gigabyte written on them, this just says G1, yeah. Okay, so it has three PCI 3.0 slots, all running in X, individually, all running X16, and if you want to run it in with two graphics cards, it'll be 8.8, and if you want to run it with three, it'll be 8.8.4. Obviously, we've got your nice PCI Legacy and three X1s here. Nice if you've got like a Wi-Fi card like I have. Oh, and I should add, it supports three-way crossfire and two-way SLI. Now, the audio is another thing that they're pushing quite a lot, like all the manufacturers seem to at the moment. I mean, pretty much every you go onto any website of any of the four big manufacturers, and they all push exactly the same thing. Oh, our audio is it's got EMI shielding and like like super duper capacitors and this nice little LED line that say, separates the board from the rest of it for electrical to keep it away from electrical interference for the best sound. And they all seem to have the ALC one one fifty audio codec under here. So yeah, there's not. In my opinion, the motherboard market is a little bit 
there's not very much innovation going on. Everyone seems to have exactly the same thing, and it's kind of you choose the one you like the look of best. Obviously, I had the Gaming 5 from MSI before, but that broke, so I went with the Gigabyte this time. It doesn't look quite as good. That the PCB is a bit brown for me, but, you know, I don't spend a lot of time staring at my case, so, yeah. As for the, the power, we've got your standard 24-pin power socket here, like in the optimal place, as usual. Then we have the 8-pin power right here. So yeah, this board should be pretty good for overclocking. I haven't actually put it into my system yet because I didn't want to put it in and then take it out again and then put it back in again. It's, yeah, there's not much room in this room, to be honest. Uh, your fan headers, you have your CPU fan header right here. And you also have your secondary, your, what do they call it, CPU opt. So that that is for like for your water pump or something like that. If you're running water cooling, you put it on there and it will just run constantly. So never ever get those the wrong way around, otherwise you'll have a pretty noisy system, which I did once before. I was like, what the hell? But yeah. So yeah, always remember to get that the right way around. Uh, as for your system fans, you have one header right here. We have another one right here. That's the third one here. And we have the second one right here. So here, here, and here. And your front one and your CPU one's right there. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the connectors we have on here. Yeah, I did point out that you have your USB 3 is right here, your onboard header here. Yeah, I do actually prefer it to be on up like this rather than at a right angle. Well, if it's at a right angle going on like this, the USB 3 cable is pretty thick, and if you've got a massive case, that's no problem. But if you've got a micro ATX case, this can be a real trouble to put it on at a right angle. So yes, thank you, Gigabyte. I much rather have it like this. Uh, as for the front, you have the uh, Gigabyte's dual BIOS right here. Great feature. Really like that they've added that. Well, I suppose they put it on everything, but over the MSI one that I reviewed before, really like that. You've got your clear CMOS thing right here. Uh, I'll have to turn it like this. Your front, you've got your front panel connector, your two USB 2.0 headers here. System fan, trusted platform module right here. Not that I don't actually know anyone who's ever used that, but yeah. you got a, a COM port here, system fan again, and your HD audio at the front. Around the back, we have two PS2 sockets, so one for your keyboard and one for your mouse. Usually it's only a combo port that you get there, so that's quite good. You have a VGA socket here, a DVI, HDMI, there are four, I almost said three, there are four USB 3 here, and yet four USB 2s here. You have the Qualcomm Atheros Killer 2200 gigabit LAN right here, and you have your standard audio output here, optical output if you have that. And as usual with most motherboards nowadays, you've got good solid capacitors, good quality alloy MOSFETs and chokes and what have you and all of all of that good stuff rated up to 10,000 hours minimum 105 degrees and yeah there's not really much more to say about this board really you oh I should say you have got six SATA six gigabit per seconds here or four if you're going to use the SATA Express so on this board it is really a gaming board. It hasn't got like extra overclock features that you're never going to use. Like for instance that MSI board that I did last time that does have like a whole load of like measuring voltages on the board and stuff. And it's, while it's nice for them to put stuff like this in I do feel that people who are proper overclockers who are going to want to do that are going to buy a board that is more like for them than buy a gaming board and then that oh well it happens to have a few overclocking things on it so I mean this will still overclock and I'm sure it'll be fine and stable but if you're going to be trying to get things like 6 gigahertz this won't be the board for you but I don't think you would buy this in the first place if that is what you wanted to do so I do think with motherboards of this generation they have reached a point where they're pretty much identical there's not really much separating them apart. I mean the gaming five that I did, you saw the video a few weeks ago or three weeks ago or however long ago it was. It really is I could have copy and pasted a lot of stuff from that video over to this because this board is really very similar. And the main thing is the aesthetics. If you prefer the look of a different one then I would say go for that one. If not then yeah. If you have an experience with a certain vendor that you know is reliable, it's been good for you in the past, then absolutely stick with that. So 
yeah okay guys thank you very much for watching uh, let me know in the comments what do you think of like the Z97 boards do you think they're worthwhile upgrading from Z87 do you think will like the new features like the M Sarta and the M.2 do they make much of a difference to you or would you rather stick with Z87 and then upgrade when Intel come out with Z107 I don't know what they're going to call it yet, but yeah, thank you guys very much for liking, watching, subscribing, like it really, I really do appreciate it, I know I don't do as many videos as I really should do, it's uh, yeah, not a good time at the moment, it's quite hot, and this room's quite small, and I suffer from very bad hay fever, so there we go, but <laughs> thank you guys, and I will see you next time.